Hey, my name is Dan. Welcome to my shop. This is where I build, maintain, and sometimes repair my model airplanes. And uh, if you're new here, well, this is where we make the magic happen. It's true. I love being in my shop. It's a magical place for me. Anyways, today we're going to be talking about this guy right here. This is my Bruce Tharp Engineering Flying King that I've made up to look like a Piper L4 that fought in World War II. So, Let's uh, talk a little bit about it. It has flown, and um, yeah, let's, let's talk about that. Be right back. Hey, welcome back to the shop. It's really good to see you here again. Here we are. It is a nice day in the middle of winter. You got to take advantage of these. And so I'm going to fly uh, Rosie the Rocketeer. This is the first flight of it. Uh, we got everything all balanced out. Everything checks out. Got all the radio mixtures and everything set to go. So hopefully this will be easy. Uh, but I'm really excited about this one. I really want to get this one in the air. And looks like the next chance we'll be able to fly is going to be a couple weeks away. So um, here we go. Okay, so it's great to be back. Oh, I had to take the wing off because that wing is so big in here. And it's like, if I put the camera down at the end of the wing, all you see is wing and I'm like, hey, how's it going? I'm way over here. You know, it's, it's just like that. Um, so not a whole lot of room uh, for that kind of stuff. I like to have you up close so I can actually point to stuff and you can see what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and talk about this plane. Like I said, uh, it's been through its maiden flight and I actually have, I think three flights on it now. And it's a good, nice flying plane, but it has a couple of things that I needed to change. Uh, let's go ahead and start with this particular uh, model. I opted for uh, a conversion kit that Bruce makes, and that is the electric conversion kit. So what it amounts to is he made it so that you've got like this right here. Okay, so this is a hatch that's not on the normal stock Flying King. And with this hatch, you're able to drop a battery down into it. And so he developed a sliding tray that you could put the battery onto a piece of plywood, hook it into this sliding tray and push it back. And it was a good design, but I had some problems with it. And it comes that he kind of designed that around if the plane was in its stock configuration, which is a tricycle gear. So you have wheels right about here and then one off the uh, firewall up here. So it's not exactly the same anymore because now I chose to make it a tail dragger. So we've got the tail wheel in the back and then we've got the one set of wheels here that kind of sits in between those two areas. And it became very apparent to me that what was going on, I couldn't get the plane to balance at all. This plane is supposed to balance somewhere. Here's where the leading edge of the wing goes right here, uh, around four, uh, four to five inches back. That's the range. There's a one inch range in there that you want to have the CG located in. And I couldn't get it to balance in it. I mean, I had to add a pound of weight up in the front in order to make the plane get to where it was on the middle of that range, four and a half inches back. So, um, yeah, that's not ideal. I don't like adding that much weight to a plane just to make it work right. And so I figured out what it is, is when he did it, it, you don't need to add any weight if it's a tricycle gear because 
the way that it was uh, putting the battery in there, you got to set it exactly on the CG where you wanted it, so you didn't have to add any weight, and it's beautiful. But when these wheels are up here and you don't have the wheel off the firewall anymore, it creates some problems. So I went ahead and ordered a product that I remember from when I got my Carbon Cub. Uh, this gentleman uh, designed a battery rack that you could drop the battery onto and adjust back. It has a whole bunch of slots on it and it holds the battery in a cage just like this one here. And uh, you can put it into the front hatch there. It will slide into whatever slot you choose, which one you find out works best for your CG, which in my case needs to be further forward. And then you lock it down with the little latch that's on the front of it right here. So um, I probably flashed a bunch of pictures across the screen so you can see what that is. But it comes from a place called Morgan Mills. I'll put the address and stuff on it. And uh, he makes this as a product specifically for that carbon cub, but I was able to easily adapt it into this plane here. And so now I'm using it as a way to get my weight forward. I still haven't been able to, to uh, take all of that extra weight out of the nose, but I've got at least half of that other. I think I've got like maybe eight ounces up in the front end now instead of having 16. So the plane is lighter. Um, so anyways, that was part of what I figured out needed to happen in order for me to lighten up the plane. The second thing that I noticed is that I, like I said, I balanced it on the four and a half inches back. And I found that even that was still way too sensitive. Like it's way too uh, far back onto the tail, tail heavy. And uh, the way I could tell is because, you know, it's, it's flying through the air and I wouldn't even have to pull back on the elevator. All I would do is think elevator and it would start to climb. It was so sensitive. So what I've done is I've um, made it, figured out where I could put that battery so that I'm sitting on the front end of that. So I've got it at the four inch mark, uh, the, the leading part of that um, center of gravity range that we can be in. So I put it all the way up into the front of that. I'm kind of hoping that what'll happen is that'll be just a little bit too front heavy and I'll end up moving it about a quarter inch back. We'll see what happens. But uh, that's one other thing that I've changed on it. And you know, one way you could tell if your surfaces are too, let me see, if you're too tail heavy is when I would go into a turn, usually what you have to do is while the plane is banked, you're giving it up elevator to keep it from diving because the normal tendency for a plane when it's in a turn is to start dropping its nose and start in a kind of a dive. So what you do is you give it some up elevator and it keeps the plane nice and level through the turn. I didn't have to use any elevator. I just bank it and it would start making its bank. And if I did pull back on the elevator, it would actually balloon upward. And I think I've got some footage in the footage of Mark shooting my uh, first flights where I could show you that exactly. Hopefully I'm showing it to you right now. If I'm not, better luck next time, I guess. And uh, so that was another thing that I changed. And then there's just little things. Uh, I, li I like to have my surfaces coupled so that the rudder is coupled to the aileron so that when I'm making a turn, it's a nice smooth turn. Love that. So that's pretty much it. Uh, at this point, I am ready to go out and fly this one again. Hopefully with all the changes I've made, it's gonna be perfect. I'll let you know how it goes. But uh, until then, we've got tons of lousy weather right now. It's cold and brown outside. Well, brown because everything's dead. A lot of white too because of all the snow and clear because of all the ice. But, you know, this too shall pass. But until then, I'll have to wait before I can fly it again. Hey, something else I wanted to tell you about was something that I found. Um, remember a couple of episodes ago, I was using the centering device for the servos. Well, um, I happened to find somebody who's still making one. And it was, uh, it was actually in all the paperwork that came with this conversion kit and the motor and the, and the uh, uh, battery, what do you call it? Speed controller, all that stuff. Uh, this is from Dave's RC Electronics. I'll put the uh, web address down below. But they have, they've got a bunch of different things actually. It's pretty cool. They've got this servo tester that looks very much like the other one that I have. 
uh, where you put the battery on one and you hook the servo to the other. And you can center the servos inside the plane prior to actually having the radio ready to get in there. So you don't have to get the radio all set up, programmed, and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you're in the middle of just building and you just want to get the servos in there and get, you know, it'll be real approximated but really close to the center of the servos bands within itself. So um, anyways, I will go ahead and pass that along. Looks like they've got one here for 20 bucks. Cool. They've got a bunch of other things on here. Um, a bunch of things like if you're into LED lighting, so you want to fly at night, they've got those kind of kits so that you can dress up your plane so you can see what it's doing. But anyways, I'll put the address down there. And then the one last thing I had for you is I found another channel that I think you guys might really like if uh, you like the stuff that I do here. Uh, the guy's name is Andy Gideon. I'll put his name on the screen down below. If you look him up, I think that his content you will really like. He's kind of like, I guess he's kind of like me in the respect of, I love scale airplanes. And Andy has a great way. I mean, right now he has been building a uh, Zeroli Bearcat, which is a 96 inch model with a big motor on it and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's a great airplane. And it's uh, one of those things, I, I guess the part that I really like about him is he's kind of a, no-nonsense builder. He's been doing it for a long time and he knows a lot of tricks and he's very, uh, he has his preferences and opinions of how things need to be done. And I think they're right on. And he's got, uh, you know, he's done some uh, neat things with this plane that he's built. He's, it's, he's building it pretty much just like any other plane we would build. He put all the sheeting on it. He put the uh, covering on it and he's just using uh, a plastic film which, you know, for scale guys, a lot of scale guys won't do anything but fiberglass and paint. So he's using plastic film and he's making it look absolutely beautiful. He's putting some tape on it to make it look like it had panel lines. And, uh, you know, he spends his time putting the detail where it needs to be, but doesn't expend a lot of time on the thing about uh, scale builders is they tend to really try to make everything perfect. They have operating door handles and hatches and all that kind of stuff. And he's uh, kind of just a no-nonsense builder and he builds a really nice looking airplane. So his channel is this one down below there. I recommend you go check it out. And um, yeah, until next time, uh, got a couple other projects coming up here. I'm going to continue to make some of these racks for the ceiling up here so that we can be hanging these models up and getting them out of uh, harm's way. And uh, the De Havilland Beaver plant, the De Havilland Beaver project is coming up here pretty quick. The De Havilland Beaver from Mustache Models. <sighs> All kinds of stuff coming. So see you next time. And uh, wow, have a great time. Let's get building, okay? Let me know if I need to run for cover. I got that one.